I'm a big fan of affordable backpacking gear, but in my search for the best budget friendly options out there, I've encountered some pretty bad gear that you 100% need to avoid. This is gear that not only won't perform, but could put you in danger when out in the backcountry. So today we're going over a bunch of gear that isn't worth the savings, as well as my recommendations for gear that will perform when you need it the most and is still relatively affordable. The first thing is a sleeping pad that has a price tag that's pretty unbelievable. This one from Amazon only cost me $10, which is a crazy deal. And if you're searching for backpacking gear, you're cruising Amazon, you come across a $10 sleeping pad, that's pretty hard to pass up. But what this sleeping pad lacks is its ability to do the two primary things that I think a sleeping pad should do, and that's be comfortable and keep you warm. It's not the least comfortable sleeping pad that I've ever tried, but there's two things that make it pretty uncomfortable when I'm sleeping out in the back country on it. The first thing is its thickness. It is a very thin pad. It's advertised at two and a half inches, but it's closer to about one, one and a half inches. And that's just not thick enough for a comfortable sleep when out in the back country, especially with a air pad like this one. Other than thickness, the pad just isn't designed for being that comfortable as well. You can see it has a decent baffling system through the middle, but then you have these angled baffles on the outside. And because it's heat pressed, which means this have two plates that press the material together in order to create the sleeping pad and make it airtight, it just doesn't lend itself to being a comfortable pad. That heat pressing system is also why this pad is not very warm. I'm pretty sure there's no insulation inside of this at all, but then also everywhere where you have these kind of indented areas, there's just very thin material. There's no air there. So that makes it so you don't have a lot of insulation and air does provide some insulation. So even if a pad doesn't have insulation inside of it, if it's a complete air pad, like something like the Uber Light from Thermrest, then you can still get an R value of about two. But because of how this pad is constructed, my guess is that it has an R value closer to one, if not less. So if you take this pad out on backpacking trips, you're probably gonna be uncomfortable and you're definitely gonna be cold if you're not in very warm temperatures. The pad that I recommend instead is the REI Helix. It can be had for a very affordable price if you wait for a sale. REI has sales pretty much every three to four months, so just wait for one of those and you can get this for about $100. And this pad is made with much better technologies. It has insulation inside of it, reflective insulation in order to reflect heat back to you. So it's gonna be warm. I've tested this down to some pretty cold temperatures on pretty cold ground, and it's also very comfortable. This kind of dimpled baffling system relieves pressure points really effectively. On a lot of sleeping pads out there, I toss and turn and kind of wake up occasionally throughout the night. But this is one of the few sleeping pads out there where I've slept through the night without waking up to toss and turn, not even once. Another item where it's super important to get something that's gonna keep you comfortable is a tent. A good tent is gonna protect you from the wind as well as from the rain and the elements. While a cheapo tent from Walmart or Amazon is probably gonna be more than enough for something like car camping, when you're on a backpacking trip, you need something that's gonna be able to perform in a variety of conditions because you can't really just bail off of a backpacking trip easily like you can with car camping where you just get in your car and drive home. Budget tents like this one from Walmart have come a long way, but they're still not something that I would really trust on a backpacking trip. The big reason for it is, like I said, its ability to protect you from rain and wind. If you put just a little bit of pressure on this tent, it buckles. A little bit of wind is gonna just collapse this tent and make it unusable, and it could put you in a dangerous situation when you're out in the backcountry. The tent uses very thin poles, which would snap very quickly if a lot of wind hit this tent. I'm also guessing that it doesn't use super high quality seam sealing in order to seal all the seams. It's probably a polyurethane, which is gonna hydrolyze pretty quickly over several years if you take care of the tent, and then you're gonna get leaking through all of these seams. This tent was only $30, so it's not an expensive tent, but I do think that it's worth spending quite a bit more money in order to get something that's gonna keep you safe and comfortable when you're on your backpacking trips. I do have a few options for you, kind of in the $200 range. The first one is the Lanshan series of tents, particularly the Pro models. They're trekking pole tents that are very lightweight, they work very well, and they don't cost too much. You can often get them closer to about $100, so definitely check those out. Another option is from Six Moon Designs. It's the Lunar series of tents, the Solo for one person or the Duo for two people. I love this tent because it uses polyester fabric, which is very resistant to absorbing water moisture, as well as doesn't sag when it does get wet. The Lunar Solo is carried by Garage Growing Gear, the sponsor of today's video and my favorite online store for backpacking gear. Well, they have some super cool affordable products like this awesome trowel or toothpaste tabs. They also carry items that cater to someone who is really trying to drop weight from their pack, like an ultralight quilt from Enlightened Equipment or a tent from Z-Packs. Go check out these awesome gear items from Garage Growing Gear at the links in the video description or at garagegrowinggear.com.
This next item is something that I'm pretty sad about because I was really looking forward to having a budget option and that's an SOS device or satellite communicator. This is the Motorola Defy, which is built by Bullet. It's a really awesome little device, super lightweight. Their plans were very affordable for satellite messaging and SOS, about five to $10 per month, or you could get a plan for the year that was only $60 and you could use it kind of whenever you wanted. Compared to Garmin and Zolio, that is super affordable and the Defy actually won an award in my 2023 Budget Gear Awards. But a recent development with the company, because they're relatively small, is that they've basically gone out of business. They've been taken over by their creditors and it's very uncertain where the device is gonna go from here and whether the service is gonna continue long term. Because of that, I have to recommend an established brand like Garmin. My go-to has been the Garmin InReach Messenger for years now, and it just, it works all the time. Garmin isn't going anywhere, they're a giant company, and you know that they're gonna be constantly innovating, adding new features, and just building better products. So in, until a company proves me wrong and shows that you can make a budget satellite device that is not gonna go to business and is gonna work long term, then I'm gonna be sticking with Garmin. Cheap socks can be good for backpacking, but the issue is that you often don't know what the materials are that they're made out of, or the materials that they are made out of, even if you know it, are not really good for backpacking. I highly recommend a sock that's made with nylon or a nylon blend, whereas a lot of cheaper socks are made with cotton or cotton blends. Cotton is terrible for backpacking socks because it holds onto a ton of moisture, all that sweat that you're creating, and then keeps that moisture near your foot, which is a recipe for blisters as well as trench foot. My go-to socks are from Exoskin. They're made with a nylon blend, so they dry very quickly. They hold their shape really nicely, and I've never had a blister of them. They also have these little mini toe socks at the end, which creates a little bit of a barrier between each of your toes, which also helps prevent blisters. These ones are also super durable. I've had this exact pair for several years now, putting hundreds of miles on them. The last thing you wanna be messing around with when you're in the backcountry is safe drinking water. You can pick up a filter like this from Amazon for $20 or less, but I don't think it's worth it. Filters from brands like Sawyer or Platypus are much more reliable. Sawyer tests all their filters multiple times before sending them out to the stores. And then with the quick draw, you can actually do an integrity test while you're in the field to make sure that it's filtering water effectively and that you're not gonna get sick. So you could save a buck and spend $15, $20 on a filter. I think it's worth spending two or sometimes even three times as much for a filter that you know is gonna work in the backcountry and keep you safe. Trust me, you don't wanna be dealing with the consequences of contaminated water. I've been there and it's not something that you wanna experience or even visualize. Let's just say that I had things coming out of both ends. If you're interested in my favorite backpacking gear, go check out this video right up here. But I do something different in this video and I talk about all the bad things about some of my favorite gear.